A long time ago in the land of Egypt, Pharaoh ruled. He loved to build beautiful palaces and temples, but it took years of hard labor to complete each building. All of this work was done by Hebrew slaves who suffered greatly and were poorly treated by the Egyptians. Advisor, bring me a report on the Hebrew slaves. Yes, your royal highness. The Hebrews are working very hard and the new temple is almost done. Their numbers have also increased, so we can start to build even more temples soon if you wish, O oh, supreme ruler of the universe. <laughs> that worries me, though. If there are so many strong Hebrew slaves, they might come together and overpower me. Let's make a new law. All baby Hebrew boys are to be drowned in the Nile River. That should fix the problem. Brilliant, sire. I'll let them know. <laughs> Meanwhile, Yocheved, a Hebrew slave, had just given birth to a baby boy. My new son must drown? No. Come, Miriam, my daughter. Let's go to the river. I have a plan to save my baby. Help me weave a basket and put him inside. We'll release him into the river. Miriam, follow him to make sure he is safe. Yes, mother. <gasps> So Moses grew up in the palace, ignorant of his Hebrew origins. He lived like an Egyptian prince instead of a Hebrew slave. One day, he went to visit a work site to see how the magnificent palaces and temples were really built. You there, work harder! Pharaoh wants this house built twice as fast, so hurry up! I can't! You haven't given us food or water and I need a break! There's simply no way I can work twice as fast. You dare talk back to me? Who do you think you are? There's nothing extra for you except for double brick production. You there, stop. I am a prince of Egypt and I say he has done no wrong. He simply needs a rest and some water. Your royal highness, he needs to learn his lesson. No one talks back to me. Watch, your highness. This is what happens when slaves refuse to loyally serve their pharaoh. I said stop. This is unfair. He's working as hard as he can. No! <laughs> I've just killed a man. If that's discovered, I'll be punished and maybe killed too. I must leave Egypt. Moses fled Egypt and crossed the desert. One day, Moses saw some women drawing water from a well to give to their large flock of sheep. They were having a hard time, so he offered to help them draw water, even though he was really thirsty and needed a drink. Here you go, ladies. Thank you so much. You look hungry, though. Why don't you come to my father's house with us? His name is Jethro, and he's very generous. Welcome, Moses. I understand you help my daughters draw water from the well. You are welcome to stay here. We are many night shepherds and don't have much, but what we do have, we share. To properly thank you, I would like to offer you sheep to start your own herd. Thank you very much. I would love to stay here. You are very kind and generous. Moses stayed with the Midianites and became a shepherd. He also married Jethro's daughter, Tzipora. One day, his herd was grazing on Mount Horeb when all of a sudden, a lamb strayed from the flock. Where are you going, little lamb? The caves don't have any grass. Come back. Good little lamb. Back to the flock we go. Nice little lambie whammy. What? Moses was shocked. Before him was a bush that was on fire but didn't burn. From it, a voice spoke. Moses, take off your shoes, for you stand on holy land. I am the God of your ancestors, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. 
he must go back to Egypt to save your people, the Hebrews. For far too long they have been slaves of Pharaoh, and I have heard their cries for freedom. Go, tell Pharaoh to let my people go. He must then deliver them to the land flowing with milk and honey, the promised land, the land of Israel. But how can I do that? I'm just one man. Pharaoh is all-powerful. No one stands up to him. Have faith. I will be with you. Go up to your people and tell them that the God of their ancestors has heard their cries and has sent you, Moses, to deliver them to the promised land. Pharaoh will not let you go. Have no fear. I will show him my wonders and you will be free. Moses packed up his belongings and journeyed back to Egypt with Sipora, his wife. He came before Pharaoh. Pharaoh, let my people go. Are you crazy? I value my Hebrew slaves very much. Why should I release all of my workers? No, I will not let your people go. Then you will face the wrath of God. Who is this God you talk about? There are only the Egyptian gods and goddesses. First you ask me to let the Hebrews go, and then you try and threaten me with your god? Get out of my palace, attendant! Yes, your royal highness. I want the Hebrews to make twice as many bricks as before. You can also stop giving them hay. If they can find mud for the bricks, then they can also find hay. No one is allowed to leave the work sites unless all the work is done. If not, punish them severely. Yes, master, I'll let them know. <laughs> But little did Pharaoh know what was coming to him. He was about to face the wrath of Hashem. First, the Nile River turned to blood. Pharaoh, let my people go. No! Then, frogs overran the Egyptian homes. But when Moses asked, Pharaoh, let my people go. Pharaoh refused. Lice infected the Egyptians' hair and made their heads itch. But Pharaoh still wouldn't let the Hebrews go. Hashem made wild beasts attack the city. Pharaoh, let my people go. No! The Egyptians' animals became sick and died. But Pharaoh still refused to free the Hebrews. The plagues continued. Pus-filled boils bubbled on their skin. Pharaoh, let my people go. No! Giant pieces of hail fell from the sky. Stubborn Pharaoh still wouldn't release his slaves. Swarms of locusts ate the crops until there was no food left. As long as Pharaoh resisted, Hashem would continue to plague the Egyptians. Next, it stayed dark even when it was supposed to be day. All throughout this time, the plagues only affected the Egyptians. The Hebrews were spared because they were Hashem's chosen people. However, the last plague would be different. Moses had special instructions for the Hebrews. Take the blood of a lamb and paint it on your door. Tonight, the angel of death will pass through the streets, seeking firstborn sons. The angel of death will pass over your house because of the blood your children will be spared. Sure enough, no Hebrew boy died that night. However, the Egyptian sons were killed by the angel of death. Pharaoh was heartbroken because his son had died. His heart was softened, so he summoned Moses to his palace. You may leave, Moses! Get the Hebrews out of here! Now go or change my mind! Moses rushed out of the palace to tell the Hebrews the good news. Everyone, pack up your belongings immediately. You are free, but we must leave Egypt now. We will head for the land of Israel, a land flowing with milk and honey. The Hebrews gathered what little belongings they had and rushed out. There wasn't even time to wait for their bread to rise. They just baked it flat. Moses led the thousands of free Hebrews to the Red Sea. But Pharaoh had changed his mind and was coming with an entire army to recapture his slaves. M -m -m moses what are we gonna do? We're trapped! Pharaoh will enslave us again! Don't worry! Hashem is with us! He'll help us! Moses put 
his hand over the water. And then another miracle happened. The sea parted. There were two giant walls of water and in between the sea floor. It was a path that could take them to safety. All the Hebrews quickly started walking across. Just as the last Hebrews had made it safely to the shore and the Egyptians started to cross, the walls collapsed and the Egyptians drowned in the sea. After suffering for ages under the cruelty of Pharaoh, Hashem had finally set the Hebrews free.